Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day yes, weekend. Yes, related. Va- <laughs> Valentine's Day weekend. Yes. I'm Joaquin. Cool. And I'm Sharon. And welcome to a new day. And s- we have Sally, our wonder supersonic yes. Sally here. Good morning, everyone. Wonder Sally. Wonder Sally. She's flying the plane again. She's flying the plane. <laughs> so we want to do something that I actually messed up earlier. Yes. We, we had rehearsals. Ahead of myself, but <laughs> we have a little something for Sally. Yeah, Sally. Yay. Thanks, guys. Sally. <laughs> hey, everyone. Yay. That's right, Sally. Get in the picture. Yes. Some cookies oh, wow. and things. Oh, right. Delicious. She's a lot so, of good cookies. She's so surprised. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's got a SAG card, people, so, you know, she's, she's good. A really cool card. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're, you're great. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, you do so much for us, Sally. You work hard. Happy we Valentine's Day. Yes. Yes, thank you. So if you look behind us, you'll see what we once were. I think the way we were. The way we were. I think we're a lot better looking now, actually. (laughs) But uh, that amazing, wonderful, gorgeous woman who hasn't aged a day is Sharon, and that dapper Dan there is me. Um, (laughs) Twenty-seven years ago. Twenty-seven years ago, Um, and I and I have to tell you that, um, and I've said this to Sharon before, so I'm now I'm going to embarrass her. In front uh-huh. of everyone, um, I would not be the man that I am without you, my love. Um, oh. I think the Lord used you to really make me who I am today, to bring out the softer spots that were buried under the uh, camouflage and the beret and all that stuff from the army. So thank you. Oh, well, you know how I feel about you. That's why I'm so excited about today's segment because we're featuring a couple. That's so I so related to them yeah. because she's she's not a risk taker. She likes to play things safe. She likes order and structure in her life. And she hooked up and, and God brought a man into her life that just is a risk taker and a visionary and a dreamer. And uh, it so reminded me of you because, <laughs> um, you know, I had a lot of dreams, but I really wouldn't be doing half the things I'm doing today without your love, your encouragement, your support. And you, and you really do push me. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I give you a little kickback on it, but you push me to do things I never dreamed that I could do. And I and one thing I have to say about my husband, I was thinking about this this oh week, boy. honey. Oh <laughs> you boy. Know, oh boy. That really, I know it sounds corny, but every day for us is really Valentine's Day yes. in this respect. You know, a lot of people they save up money all year long to have this big spectacular vacation you know I'm gonna go on a cruise or I'm gonna go to Europe or wherever I'm gonna go to Vegas or wherever you're gonna go right and uh, you, you kind of like have so much anticipation for that one or two weeks and I thought about it that that for the most part hasn't been our experience we no, really haven't had really. a whole lot of money to do <laughs> those kind of <laughs> trips not really but what has been so special to me in these 27 years of being married to this wonderful man is that you You make the slightest little thing every day a date. Well, of course. I mean, we have. if I have to run an errand, we have to go to grocery shopping or we have to go to a doctor's appointment, and I'll be like, oh, I got to do this again. And he'll be like, that's okay, honey. Let, like, well, let's make it a date. And, you know, we'll, we'll either end up going having, you know, a cappuccino somewhere and stopping at a bakery and having right. some cookies. But it's like you make every, uh, even the, the most common, ordinary, mundane things, and you have a way of just making them a date. And really, that's where life is lived. 
Definitely. Life is lived in the everyday thing. You don't live on a cruise. That's you true. don't live in Vegas. No, you, you know, although life, you wish you could. <laughs> <laughs> so, you wish you could. Life is lived in those everyday moments. And I just want to thank this wonderful man because he really has a way of just cheering me up and making even grocery shopping a date. You'll always say, yeah, that's okay, honey. Well, let's do this afterwards and let's do that. So for me, that's what's been the long, part of the longevity of our relationship. You know, not, these, not just Valentine's Day. You know, you don't live for one day of the year. You don't love for one day that's of the right. year. That's right. No, you don't. You know? Yeah. But, you know, I, I, think, I think one of, I mean, besides the first and foremost reason why we've been married 27 years um, has been the Lord, has always been, you know, a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Uh, and we've been through, we've had our s- s- challenges and our, and our right. stresses. But I think that, you know, part of the challenges that people have when they get married, and I think that where they feel, you know, uh, like that song in the, I think it was the 80s, or after the love is gone, you know, how will, you know, how will I continue or whatever. I think because, like you said, people put everything on this one magical honeymoon, moment. one magical moment, mm-hmm. and then we're back into the, the grind right. of daily life. And I think that, you know, part- particularly guys, you know, they, they come after, they chase the woman, they hunt her down, for want of a better word, and, and then all of a sudden, okay, I got her, so now what? <laughs> you know, um, and I, th- I think it's a matter of like, like uh, Vincent Fernier, a.k.a. Alice Cooper, if you watch the show, said, you know, I continue, she, uh, Cheryl said, he continues to pursue me. I think that's a, a constant pursuing. It can't just be, you know, you can turn even the smallest things into a date, into something memorable, something wonderful. And I think that, that you know, creates the intimacy. Yes, because that's where people live. You don't live on one day a year. No, you, know, you, you don't. You live in the nitty-gritty grind of life, the that's routine right. of life. That's right. So. And I must say that one of the reasons that, aside from the Lord and aside from all of the things that we've been doing and talking about, there are two wonderful people who oh, we're going to put we their go. pictures up yeah, there. Yeah, they're very shy. And, Mom, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to embarrass <laughs> you because you didn't want to be on this show. But, uh, you know, Sharon's parents have been wonderful. There, there they are, Mom there and are. Dad. Yay. Yay. 62 years. 62 of years of marriage. So, you know, God bless you. I mean, you both have been such a, such a pillar to both of us. We've been through some difficult times in our 27 years. And there's never been a moment when mom and dad weren't on their knees praying for us, counseling us, being there with us, taking a leap of faith and a risk, even with the, with the, our uh, Pure Grace Ministries and being a part of our ministry. I mean, it's just been uh, a wonderful example of how the two of them for 62 years have been married and raised a beautiful daughter who, in the Lord, um, I, you know, I couldn't be more blessed. And, and I got to say... One of the things that most shocked me about them is that they love me just like they love their daughter. And for me, that was very hard for me to grasp because I came from a big family that, you know, I'm not blood. How would you how would you love me as much and treat me with the same level of respect? And, you know, I, she, she doesn't get a better gift than I do. It's always equal. Um, I can't say enough. We love you guys. I love you, mom and dad. And dad, I know that you ran out of Reese's Pieces, so I'm going to try to get you some more. <laughs> <laughs> We're so blessed because, you know, mom and dad are in their 80s, and um, they're just going as strong as they yes. were years and years ago. God bless so them. We're blessed. And, and to be married 62 years, that's a blessing in yes, this it world. Is. So that's why we wanted to put you up there today. Yes. And this, in this I've, holiday where everyone's celebrating love, we thought it was that you should be here along with yeah. us. Oh, and did everyone notice our Valentine's Day balloons? Yes, we, we got decorated balloons. decorated the studio today. Decorated the studio today. And uh, uh, we were going to play the theme from Love Boat, but we didn't want to get put in Facebook prison. Um, And I didn't want to make you all pass out from my singing. So we're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is um, I'm going to turn over to Sharon, and she's got some some awesome Valentine's Day fun facts. This is going to be a fun show today. We have some fun. We have some inspiration. So uh, actually, I have to start out with... This is my corny joke segment. Oh, yes. I forgot. (laughs) Corny joke segment. That's right. Oh, Sally almost choked on that one. (laughs) Yes. Be nice, Sally. (laughs) So, you know, as you know, guys, last week, or not last week, last episode, 
I had asked you to please write in and send me some family-friendly clean jokes. And I, I, people, I only got one person write in and send me a clean, funny joke. So that either means either you people are way too serious or you don't know any clean jokes, which either way, that's a problem. So which one? please, which please, one? please uh, send church. me your funny jokes. Um, but I have some funny. Oh, on funny jokes, I want to, the first person, Uncle Frank, thank you. Yes, we know you're, you're tuning in, Uncle Frank and Aunt Isabel. Yes, he was the one who sent me the, the funny The first jokes. one. So we're going to, we, it's not appropriate for today because it's Valentine's, but you de we're definitely going to get you on there. And uh, we also want to say hi to Frankie and Kim because they're probably in tuning into in Virginia. And our buddy Ken Peschel. Yes, Ken, Ken, we love you. We know you're traveling right now. Safe travels. And uh, we'll definitely be talking soon. And we're going to get Ken on the show one day. Ken is actually the writer of our song, if you're just tuning in, um, of this, our theme song. Um, Every Morning. Every Morning. Beautiful, beautiful song. Sorry, Hardy. No, actually, which if you... Stay with us, or when you get to the last two minutes of our show, is always the remainder of Ken's yes, beautiful song. Yes, and it's a so beautiful make sure song. So you check it out, yes, the last two minutes. Absolutely. Because it's such a beautiful song. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, I can't find a uh, friend the front of Facebook for me. I can't So anyway, let me go into you my your uh, Facebook? jokes while they're um, doing something. <laughs> they're doing some technical like stuff here. Sorry. That's okay. Anyway, while Wait, he's doing that. Gov's radio. Which I got... I got one line is for you. I'll give this to you, Sally. Did you hear about the bed bugs who fell in love? No, I did not hear about the bed bugs who fell in love. Yeah, they got married in the spring. <laughs> That's <laughs> gross. Ew. That's pretty gross. That's great. Anyway, and this one's for Dad. What's the best part about Valentine's Day? Dad, it's the day after when all the chocolates go on sale, because I know that's where he'll be. He's going to the drugstore and getting everything half price. So anyway, here's some funny Valentine's Day marriage one-liners. Before marriage, a man will lie awake all night thinking about something you said. After marriage, he'll fall asleep before you finish. <laughs> That's when you know you've been married too long. And another funny one-liner, a man is incomplete until he's married. After that, he's totally finished. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little funny little one-liners for you. And uh, I did want to tell you about two humorous little stories that I had, um, two funny little Valentine's Day stories uh, about a husband and wife. The first one is a husband uh, is sleeping, and his wife shakes him awake in the middle of the morning. Nope, that's it. And he's shook up, and he asked her, he asked her, what's wrong, honey? She shakes him awake out of bed, and he goes, what's wrong? And she's so excited. She said, I just had a dream that you bought me a diamond ring and diamond earrings for Valentine's Day. So what does it all mean? <laughs> so he looks at her, he just winks at her, and he goes, you'll know tonight, honey, you'll know tonight. So she goes through the whole day, she's all excited. So he comes home that night with a beautifully wrapped present box. So she, she rips it open, she's so excited, and inside the box is the, a book, The Meaning of Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, was, she, you know that guy sleeping in the garage, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's that. And my last corny joke, which people, you have to help me out because I know these jokes are corny. But my last funny story, this is two guys, two co-workers talking at work. And the one guy asks the other guy, did you get your wife something for Valentine's Day? And he replies and he says, yeah, I bought her a nice bag and a nice belt. Mm. So the guy, the co-worker replies, oh, that's so thoughtful of you. I hope she really appreciates the bag and the belt. And the husband replies, well, so do I. And hopefully now the vacuum cleaner will work a whole lot better, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bag in wow. a belt. <laughs> that's terrible. So that's, <laughs> that's when you know you've been married too long. <laughs> so a little humor there, a little corny humor. But you guys, I know you, you've got better jokes than I do. So please, please, please send them in. Make sure they're G and they're yes, clean. Family please. friendly. And family what are we? Friendly. A new day dot NYC, right? Yes. Is that where they can a send? A new day dot NYC. Dot yes. NYC, okay? At so, gmail.com. Oh, at gmail. Or yeah, they so can go to a the new day dot NYC at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Okay. So you got some, so, some interesting yes. thing I can't Now wait we to got see. some Valentine's ah, Day trivia. Yes, Valentine's Day which trivia. Which is the first slide there. Sally's putting it up for us. We found some really interesting facts about Valentine's Day that we thought were, wow, this was really surprising and um, 
I would have never guessed the amount. There's a whole lot of people spending a whole lot of money for Valentine's Day to show their love. So we were going to go through some of the items. You can probably see it on your screen, yep, but yep. it's Sally's got them pretty all. shocking. Day. Honey, you want to read some of them? Yeah, so the average annual Valentine's Day spending is $20.7 billion. Billion with a B. 58 million pounds of chocolate are purchased during the Valentine's Day week. That's a lot of chocolate. And that was half of it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> Average number of roses produced for Valentine's Day, 224 million roses. Wow. Number of Valentine's Day's card exchange annually, 180 million. Teachers receive the most Valentine's Day cards, followed by children, mothers, wives, and sweethearts. That one I thought was surprising because I never thought about that. You know, you always think that Valentine's Day cards are going to, you know, sweethearts and wives and girlfriends. But Valentine's Day really has become such a yeah. broader holiday. It's for everyone that you love. And so teachers are receiving the most Valentine's Day cards. Well, it's um, f for anybody who remembers Van Halen had a song called Hot for Teacher. So I guess back in the <laughs> 80s. So, um, okay. So, Sally, you want to take yeah, the next Yeah, take the uh, second one. The next box there. All right. So let's see. The, let's see, the, the average consumer spends on Valentine's time $145 yeah, each on Valentine's Day? Yeah, yeah on each. average. Can you believe average. that? Wow, average. I have to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> really? You better tell Tony to step wow. up his game. <laughs> you step yeah. up his game. Yeah, yeah we're on, like Tony. flower cards, chocolate people. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Um, sp total spending for jewelry on Valentine's Day is $4.7 billion. Wow. The percent of women... Who would end their relationship <laughs> if they didn't get something for Valentine's <laughs> Day is really 53%. Yeah, can you really? believe that? Can you believe that? Yeah, wow. That's it's pretty, a pretty serious that's holiday. That's pretty sad. Uh, the, average, the average number of wedding proposals on Valentine's Day, which amounts to 10% of marriages, is uh, 220,000. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. I mean, it is kind of nice if you think about it, if you like, because you, you've thought ahead. Like, you can get your anniversary and Valentine's Day done all in one day. All in one day. That's true. Boom, done. <laughs> Boom, done. It's like the poor kid born on, you know, Christmas or something. Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah, the exactly. That's my mom. Yeah, that happened with my mom. Oh, really? Yeah, she's a Christmas baby. So here's a gift for Christmas and your birthday. That's what we say. Right. So, honey, you want to do you this one? Okay. Average number of children conceived on Valentine's Day is 11,000 children. So that means anyone with a birthday on or around November 6th may be a Valentine's Day baby. Wow. Yeah, I found this interesting because my dad's born uh, November 8th. Oh, so, we <laughs> so, know what so we know what happened. <laughs> well, it's funny because like, there's three of us in our family, and we're all like born in April. And I'm like, Dad had vacation in August. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ew, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Valentine's Day Grinches. Roughly 43 million Americans, that's about 17% of the population, will get an unwanted Valentine's Day gift. This calculates to about $9.5 billion spent on gifts that nobody wants. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. And then this was a funny one. People who call Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day with an M, way too many. It means a lot of people don't know how to say Valentine's Day. Yeah. Wow, that's that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. But those are some interesting fun facts about Valentine's Day and um, actually this leads us into our next thing. Yeah, this but is cool. I'm looking forward to it. I was thinking about your family when I put this this little game together because anyone who knows us when we have birthday parties or barbecues, we always, always, always have games. Yeah, we always we do. Trip. That's our thing. Yeah. Our favorite, our favorite <laughs> one is name that tune. Name that tune. Yep. Exactly. We have trivia games. That's what I thought about. And that. people do win prizes. Yep, we actually gift have cards prizes. to like Cold Stone's Creamery or you know Dunkin' Donuts or Applebee's and stuff like that. So yeah, so I mean, we it, people love it. Although, except your family. <laughs> Yeah, they, they I don't, was thinking of your they family. Don't like I was to like, name that tune. Secretly, they're, they're not really. I think they really. They're like, oh, we got to play this game. Yeah, again. <laughs> they I know. Like I know. I know. It's like, oh, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, they don't like trivia games, but I love trivia games, and uh, we always we always have games around our home. So we came up with 
a Valentine's trivia game called Let's Talk About Love. Well, you came up because I don't even know um, the answer yeah. to these things. <laughs> yeah, I know the answers, but Sally and Joaquin don't no, know the answers. No, we don't. So, we're gonna so have they're going to gonna play. Again, we're going to have a little friendly competition here. Oh, okay. All right. See if they can guess who said what. She looks I like have, she's kind of like a game person. I think. Are you a game person? No, but I'm, no, okay. I'm up for it. I'm totally fine. She's totally fine? Yeah. Okay. okay. We have nine Valentine's Day quotes. Okay. Well, they're not Valentine's Day. They're love quotes. Okay. Okay. And they were said by famous people. They're s- famous celebrities, either actors or singers or whatever. So I want to see. And all we're going to give you, we're going to give you the quote. So you can play this at home. See how smart you are, guys. We're going to give you the quote mm-hmm. and give you just their initials. And see if you can guess who said this quote about love. So we're calling this Let's Talk About Love. Okay, and I think Sally's going to put our first slide up. Like, for instance, we had a practice round at home, honey, while she's mm-hmm. getting the slide up. Do you know who said, absence makes the heart grow fonder? Now, this person didn't originally say it, but she's credited for one of her inspirational sayings for saying that. And actually, you guessed it at home. So you out there in audience land, do you know who said, absence makes the heart grow fonder? Sally. Not me. I don't like to have an absence. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a stalker. <laughs> she's a stalker. <laughs> You guessed it, honey. You want to tell Eleanor you? Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt. Oh, yeah, because she didn't want to be married to her husband. <laughs> 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 wow, that was a shocker. That was a shock. <laughs> Sally's no, our resident you, comedian. You go run the country. I'll <laughs> be doing other things. Okay, so... So, actually, we're going to up the stakes. Whoever wins this round uh, between Sally and Joaquin uh, t- gets to take our Valentine's balloons home. So, <laughs> we'll up the stakes, yeah. Okay, so then I'm definitely going to lose. <laughs> Why, you don't want the balloons? No, because, you know, t- S- Sally looks like, you know, when the stakes are high, she's going to step up. Yeah, she looks competitive. Yeah, she does. Okay, so the first one wasn't love is a friendship cut on fire. Like, where where was the one that you just read? Oh, no, oh. we need to do uh, the first yeah, the, one. Love is like a friendship. You can need, we put can a put panorama? Put yeah, that's that? totally fine. Yep. Okay. Okay, got okay, it. Okay, so you guys, everyone play at home. See, see is if there a way guess. to just zoom in on the... Yep. There you go. Oh, that's perfect. Sure. Just no, I mean to one. put that camera yeah. on the screen so people can. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. So who wants to read this quote? Who's going to volunteer? All right. I'll do it. Love is like a friendship caught on fire in the beginning of flame, very pretty, often hot and fierce, but still only light and flickering. As love grows older, our hearts mature and our love becomes as coals, deep burning and unquenchable. Initials B.L. Mm-hmm. And, okay. and I'll tell you, I'll give yeah, you a hint. we need a hint because I'll I... give you a hint. <laughs> it's an actor. An actor. Male or female? Male. Male. And dead. <laughs> and dead, okay. okay. A dead male actor. A dead male actor. And How long ago did he die? Huh? Um, ooh. I'd say, uh, hmm. How long ago did he die? Maybe two decades ago, maybe like 20 years ago. 20 years ago, so, so he was an old dude. This one's going to surprise you. You're not going to associate this quote with this person. At least I didn't. BL. I don't know. Sally? TikTok, TikTok, nobody No, no, no idea. People okay. can write in, though. I'll give you, I'll give you another hint. Um, martial arts. Bruce Lee. Yeah. She got wow. it. Bruce Lee. I would have never like associated Bruce Lee saying that for some reason. But that came from Bruce Lee. Yeah, and everything that he ever said sounded kind of angry. So I, I'm trying to like <laughs> picture him like saying this. Exactly. Love is a front up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, he's going, what the all? <laughs> all right, okay, so Sally, you want right, to read, so the next read one? that one? All right. Do you know how to tell real love? It's when someone else's interest trumps your own. I like to put it this way trumps your own. Love of somebody else, of family, of your kids, becomes the most important, most worthwhile thing in your life. It's what you foster and protect. BP. Male, female? Male. Male. Actor, singer? Actor. This one's alive. (laughs) He's still alive. I'm drawing a blank. We need hints. You need hints? Yeah, we need hints. All right, I'm going to give you a hint, but this is going to give it away. Oscars. Think the Oscars. Brad Pitt. Yay! Got it. Hey. Nice. All right, we're tied. 1-1. <laughs> one, we're tied. 1-1. One, one. Yeah. <laughs> one, one. Okay, what's the next one? I don't know how you guys are doing out there at home, but... 
see how smart you are. And actually, I thought these quotes were interesting coming from these people, and they were actually, some of them, pretty profound, you know, so that's why we chose these. Okay. Who wants, do you want to, you go back to you, honey? Okay. Love has nothing to do with what you are expecting to get, only with what you are expecting to give, which is everything. Nice quote. Uh, K-H. K-H. Female. Actress? Actress. Mm. Actress. Catherine Hepburn. Wow. Oh, that Which, was fast, uh, Sally. Okay, I'm <laughs> definitely not getting these balloons now. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's two Next. One. Someday I want to have children and give them all the love I never had. Maybe it is Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Get <laughs> a you know, you know, rough going. Yeah. Uh, uh, hmm. Male or female? Female. Female. Actress, right? Actress. Hmm. I thought this one was probably the most obvious of all, if I had to take a guess. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Nice. Yeah. Good okay, job. we tied Marilyn again. Monroe. Yay. Okay. Two, two. Two, two. There is n- there's no bad consequences of loving fully with all your heart. You always gain by giving love. Male or female? R.W. Female. Actress. Actress. Alive? Alive. Yep, hmm. very alive. R.W. R.W. I'm drawing a blank. I need a hint. Renee. I don't know. That's a Z. That's a Z? Yeah. Uh, You guys want a hint? Yeah, please. Okay, this is going to give it away. So it's whoever the first is that says it. (laughs) Legally Blonde. Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, yeah, good. Nice yeah, guy. Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> I like her. I like her. She's good. Cool. And I think we have what? One more slide? Yeah, I think there's one yeah. more slide. One more slide with a few quotes. There is no person that love cannot heal. There is no soul that love cannot save. C S. And this is a singer. Okay? Singer. Boy or girl? And musician. Boy. And alive. <laughs> hmm. C.S. I don't know. I need a hint. You need a hint? Okay. I hope I give the right, <laughs> hope I give the right hint with this. Okay. Um, guitar is his instrument. Oh, is it a guy? It's a guy. Oh, for some reason I thought yeah. you said girl. No, it's a guy. Guitar is his main instrument. And he sings. And he sings. Uh, Cat Stevens. No, but that's a good one. Mm. Wow. Yeah, he would have said something like that, actually. No, but that's a good one. Um, this person is Latino. Oh. That's your first hint. Uh, wow. Wow. Oh. Okay, now my second hint. I hope I give the right hint. <laughs> I'm not too sure. I think Chicago. Think Chicago originally. Chicago. Am I right? I don't Carlos know. Santana. Yes. That is right. I got the Spanish one. You Come on, it? man. Yeah, yeah. Step it up. Can I tell you, honey. Honey. That's like if you got all the Irish little ditty songs, it'd be embarrassing. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> That's funny. As simple I love you means more than money. Male or female? Male. Very, very famous. Like, uh, mega famous. Mega Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Sally's on a so roll. She's like 42 here. now. What's yeah, up with that? Yeah, Sally. Mm. Okay. Oh, and this one you have to scroll down a little further, Sally, because there's two Because it's all of it. They've got, yeah. So it's got to be a woman because there's a lot to say here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Honey, you want to read this one? I think if you can prove the existence of God, it can only be proven through love. I think love is something that you have to work on, and it develops over experience and time. Love is a practice, and it's one of these one-word people. It's a one. It's a one like word a Madonna person. or something. Yeah, it's like a one-word person. But is it a boy or girl? Girl. Selena. No, but uh, that's a good guess. Shakira. Yeah, it's <laughs> Shakira. I guess. Good. That's great. It's Shakira. Nice. Oh I was going to say Super guess. Bowl if you didn't know, but yeah, I'll put that I up there for guessed. a second. Is that it? No, I think, is there one more? There's one more, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's four to three. Four to 
Four to three? Oh, okay, this is it. So we're going to have to have a tiebreaker we'll round. have a tiebreaker. You didn't plan for that, did I you? I didn't, okay. All right. Love, okay, I'm sorry, this is Sally. No, go, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Love is an endless act of forgiveness. Forgiveness is me giving up the right to hurt you for hurting me. Oh, that was a deep sink. Dude. B. Sally. Boy no. or girl? Girl. Also very famous. Beyonce. Yeah. That's it. Nice. Beyonce. Okay. Yeah. So nice. Beyonce. Four, 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 four. Is there a tiebreaker around? There's not. No, I only have an anonymous. I, the last slide was the anonymous one I liked. Oh, mm. wow. What do we do with a tiebreaker? Yeah, what is the last one? Who did that one? Oh, it is just anonymous? It's yeah, anonymous, it's an anonymous, but it was fine. Really, I thought that was really pretty. It was a really nice saying. That's why I put it up there. You want to read it, Sally? Sure. What, what most people need to learn in life is how to love people and use things instead of using people and loving things. Isn't that cool? Wow, that's deep. Yeah. It really, really, really is. is. Okay, so uh, we'll have to flip for the balloons so later. Yeah, you have to split the balloons. <laughs> <laughs> they'll flip for the balloons. They'll, they'll fight over the balloons. I'm like just so them. glad that we got them because you, you play these things, and it's so embarrassing when you can't come up with, like, one thing. So. No, you guys did good. Yeah, I'm shocked. <laughs> My, I mean... <laughs> You guys did really good. I don't know how you, how you did in the, our audience, but uh, hopefully you knew some of them too. But I thought it was a nice little way to segue now right. into the rest of our program, which I'm so, so excited about this couple. I just love this couple. Actually, I've never been a fan really of this in the sense of I never really sat and watched a lot of their episodes, but I, were familiar, I was familiar with them. Right. We're featuring, this is part of our Spotlight series today, and we're going to continue part two in two weeks. But we're featuring today Chip and Joanna Gaines from HGTV's mega hit, Fixer Upper. So those of you who like to watch all these Fixer Upper shows, um, like Property Brothers and Love It or List It, so you know who Chip and Joanna Gaines are. As a matter of fact, I think Sally just put up their beautiful wedding photo. We're showing their wedding photo from... Uh, 17 years ago. They were married in May of 2003, so they've been together for 17 years, and they have five beautiful children in addition to their empire that they built. There's so many things to love about this couple, and that's why they're the subject of our Spotlight series today. Their hit show, Fixer Upper, was on HGTV for five years, and um, they currently own a business empire that's called Magnolia. That's their brand, Magnolia. And mm -hmm. I love the story about how they got that brand name, Magnolia. He Chip tells the story how when him and Joanna went on one of their first dates, he actually climbed a magnolia tree and pulled down a blossom, a, a bloom for wow, her. Wow, that is so cool. And so that from there was born. Super romantic. Isn't that so romantic? Yeah, That's such a perfect absolutely. Valentine's Day. So from there was born their whole Magnolia business line. Uh, it includes a restaurant, a market and bakery, a coffee shop, furniture, paint, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and they've literally turned their hometown of Waco, Texas, into a, to a tourist destination. Wow. Where people come. So, and you're going to get to see them. We're going to play some, Sally's going to treat us to some video clips in case you're not familiar with this couple. We're going to give you an intro to them and to their show. Uh, Chip is kind of the goofball foreman behind it. <laughs> the sense of humor and Joanna is the one who's the, the designer of the team but together they're such a perfect team and I think they're going to really be inspiring to you because they're successful now but there was a long journey to that success yeah. a lot of steps along the way a lot of trial and error along the way so if Sally I don't know are you ready with the first promo clip yep, looks like it so we're going to play two clips for you and then we'll meet you on the other side of these clips okay Are you excited as I am? Hi! <laughs> Just a little bit. The wait is over. Uh, boom! Chip and Joe are back with more Fixer Upper. You ready to do this? Right there. <laughs> You're such a show off. Step in here, hot pants. You punk. <laughs> I love you. Raise your hand if you want to break some stuff. Yes! Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Go 
forget him, Jojo. You can do this, babe. I can do it. I love getting to take their home and create this dream home for them. You guys ready to check out your fixer upper? Oh! <gasps> Is it a good cry, Miss Beecham? Okay. What are you? Oh! You slayed it. Welcome home. Beautiful. Whoa. You killed it. Unbelievable. Wow. This is amazing. Yes. Fix forever. Tuesday night at 9, only on HGTV. So you can see that these guys are goofballs, but as, you know, Sally's going to get our uh, the, the next video clip, which is really it's kind of the meat and potatoes of today's show that was absolutely uh, powerful. There were some things that... Um, the particularly that I found profound. Oh, well, that's after that. That's not the next um, clip coming up. Oh, okay. Well, excuse me. No, sorry. I got ahead of myself, no, boys sorry. and girls. Um, but they're, they're, the two of them are just amazing. I mean, I, I think that you and I, when we went through this, kind of saw ourselves, a lot of ourselves uh, in our journey mm -hmm. as husband and wife in it. So this is very much uh, near and dear to us. So let's... Let's tune in. Show you what we're doing in the clip. kitchen with these. All right, let's Grab see what one. we got. If you're not already addicted. Okay. I think this bracket to me is like screaming, let's do one, one more show. show. Okay. Meet Chip and Joanna Gaines, the rising stars of HGTV's Fixer Upper. We take the worst house in the best neighborhood and we turn it into our client's dream home. Are y'all ready to see your Fixer Upper? They've renovated dozens of homes in Waco, Texas. Oh, Here's the shiplap room. I think it looks great. It looks really good. She has the vision. Today's demo day. He executes the plan. Hi. And after Hi. weeks of construction, Joanna has one day to set the stage for the big reveal. Now it's the finishing touches. It's all the things that truly make this house feel like a home I'm getting to do tonight, so I love this time. Where is the furniture? It's in my, it's in my furniture uh, warehouse. I call it like <laughs> the hoarding it? zone. No, it's, it's, it's the it's furniture. Storage. What do you call this collection? Joanna's um, treasure trove? Um, it's, yeah. Lentils, doors. These are really tall. An old garden gate, full of possibilities she alone can see. When I look at something like that, I immediately see two twin headboards built into the wall for if I ever do a little girl's room, I'll need those one. Why does it have to be built into the wall? Why wouldn't you just like I would? I think it makes it more interesting. Joanna has the designer's eye, but Chip was the original fixer-upper. He flipped his first house while still a student at Baylor University in Waco. I just buy distressed properties and then renovate them and sell them. How did you know how? You know, that's the million dollar question. Kind of like a, a mechanic might tinker with a car. I but did that with houses. But how did you know how? <laughs> trial and error. Lot, there were, lots of there trial was and a, error. There was a lot of error. Joanna was a communications major at Baylor and prepping to take over the family business, selling tires. You know us as a locally owned, family operated tire store with the lowest price guarantee. Chip became a very steady customer. He's always made me laugh. That's why I fell in love with him. There's something about his humor that, I don't know, I would just always be rolling thinking this guy is interesting. Newlyweds, they started renovating small houses together. Four years ago, Joanna was discovered by a blog. And then HGTV came calling. I would say within a few weeks, they had camera crews down. I expect there to be, you know, five to 10%. Chip Martin was a natural. Air. That's what I do best, cheesy and dorky. Yep. I've always kind of been the type to where I felt like cameras were following me around sort of in a pretend way, you know? One. But Joanna two, was a revelation. Three. Ah! He was actually pretty sure that there'd be a star in this show. And maybe he was a little surprised that it's you. I still, to this day, I'm just like, I don't know if they're watching the same show that I'm watching, <laughs> but there's a clear star here that has been born, and the country seems to think it's my wife, and I'm telling you, it's me. Well, it's both it of you. you. <laughs> the Lone Star State is big enough for two more stars. Let me see what 16 feet is. And they're big enough to share the spotlight. That would be to there. Fans know Clint Hart. Joanna's go-to so, I mean, carpenter. I met Joanna and she said, hey, so if I wanted you to build something, could I just like 
draw some stuff Benches down on a piece of paper. Side. And at the time, Jane, I had built maybe two or three tables and a bed of which none of them had sold. You exceeded our expectations Boom. as always. Good work, dude. Way to go, Clint Hart. People will say like, so how has this show changed your life? And I'm like, well, I'm sitting with Jane Pauley, you know, <laughs> in my shop. <laughs> You're just natural born entrepreneurs, mm. the mm. both of you. Sure. And when you have an idea, it gets executed mm. pretty darn fast. Mm. There's a real estate company, bed and breakfast, furniture line, paints and rugs, a book coming out in the fall. And their most ambitious undertaking so far, the silos. Twin rusting hulks on the Waco skyline, now a landmark, drawing 25,000 visitors a week to their Magnolia Market. I just love the stuff she does. It looks like stuff you would have in your home. She's just brilliant. Nobody's mentioned Chip yet. No. Chip is just awesome. <laughs> He's just awesome. He is. He's funny. I'm offering 50. I'm gonna take you your fifty dollars. Right Chip, don't do it. Okay, fifty bucks. Oh my God! Perhaps the ultimate fixer-upper is the city of Waco, Texas, the unlikely capital of home renovation. I feel like, to some extent, this is California back in the gold rush days, or Alaska during its boom. You know, I'm thinking if you can make it here. Mm -hmm. You could make it anywhere. Oh, I like that. I oh, like yeah. that. I think uh, Sinatra would probably be turning over in his grave, but I, I, <laughs> I'd take that. I'd take that any day of the week. That's awesome. Yeah, so that gives you a, a little brief overview in case you weren't f already familiar with Chip and jo Joanna Gaines. But uh, what they're doing now is they're actually launching out on a brand new adventure. They're no longer doing Fixer Upper. That show ran for five seasons. Right. And now they're on the verge of this summer, they're launching their own new network, television network, in partnership with Discovery mm -hmm. called Magnolia. And it's not only going to just focus on uh, construction and design, but it's going to be a broad network that's going to feature additional shows wow. on everything from lifestyle to faith to diet to cooking to just gardening, everything. So this is the kind of the next step in their journey the, where God has given them such great success and now they're launching out on this network that right. I'm, I'm excited to see coming this summer. Right. But um, what struck me about them, and we're, gonna, we're, we're setting the table now for the next segment with you, is that it looks like they're living the dream. Yeah. Right? They've got a great family, wonderful children, they've got a successful business, wonderful marriage, so they're living the dream. But what struck me about them, and this is where we get to see the flip side of Chip and Joanna, which I love these segments. I love peeling away the layers of people, like an onion, and seeing what's underneath all that. And we'll <coughs> get to see that this was really a journey for them. Right. And it didn't start out that way. And it gave me hope to dare to dream and not to give up on my dreams. So I don't know. Was there anything you wanted to add to that? No, I, I think one of the reasons why, you know, Sharon did it this way, and I, th and I think it's perfect, is because, you know, I if you're a fan of, uh, uh, of Chips and Joanna, you're like, yeah, okay, I know this. Okay, I know this, I know this, I know this. <clears throat> but it's kind of like what we did with Alice and Cheryl. Like, everybody knew the rocker but didn't know the man behind the paint, right? And so, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, our show is about giving inspiration and hope. So if, P if God can move so dramatically in people's lives, he can do it for you too because he doesn't yes. he doesn't he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't God doesn't say, Well, I favor that one over this one. So there's there's hope and that's really what we're gonna see now. So Sally. I remember as a little girl, my mom was Korean and my father was Caucasian and I never knew there was anything different about myself until I started going to school. And I'll never forget an experience I had Thanks. in the school lunchroom. You know, I remember standing there and seeing the sea of people, felt like all eyes were on me. And I was thinking, you know, who's gonna be my friend? Who am I gonna sit with? I started walking through that lunchroom and then I remember darting straight out and I found a bathroom, locked myself in a stall. Uh, but, but in those moments is when I really believe that that's where the lie was sown, uh, that who I was wasn't good enough. You know, as we all do, I grew up and I grew out of the insecurities, had great friends, great childhood, 
And I remember in those times, I, I heard him specifically say, you know, Joanna, I have a calling for you. You're gonna have a platform one day. And I remember thinking, what does that even mean? And I remember hearing God say, Joanna, there's gonna come a time where I'm gonna say for you to go and I'm gonna need you to step out and go. After graduating college, you know, a couple years later, I end up meeting this handsome, rugged cowboy who was hilarious, uh, Chip Gaines. And we got married and he knew that I had this whole thing of businesses that I wanted to start, but he also knew I was never going to just take the risk and start them. I just dreamed about them. And he really encouraged me to step out and make one of those dreams happen. And we opened Magnolia Market together and I loved it, you know, but at that time I was also pregnant with my second child and I really felt like God was saying, hey, I want you home. I want you raising these babies at home at this age. And I remember the last day, you know, we're closing the shop down and I'm crying because again, I feel like it's the end of a dream. And I hear God say very clearly, he said, Joanna, if you trust me with your dreams, I'm gonna take Magnolia further than you could have ever dreamed, so just trust me. And I remember hearing that and feeling completely peaceful about it, and I walked away. Well, a couple years ago, we get this call um, from a production company, and they ask us to film a quick video of our family and what we do as a business, and that turned into um, the show that we have now. You know, Chip and I laugh. We look back and we just go, how did this all happen? And I remember last year, um, in January, Chip and I took a trip to Arizona and, and we were driving around and we found this really beautiful garden and Chip said, I'm gonna drop you off here. I'm gonna give you about an hour and I want you to kind of reflect on the year before and then just let God speak to you about what this next year is gonna look like. And he dropped me off and I'm sitting under this tree and I, I felt like God said, Joe, it's time. And I was like, time for what? And he said, it's time to reopen your store. And I said, I don't, I don't think I can do that. And just cool and calm, no, it's time. May of last year, we reopened the shop on Bosky, the little shop on Bosky. And now I look back and I go, God, your promise that you spoke years ago, I'm now seeing, um, I trusted you with my dream and you've taken it far beyond what I could have ever dreamed or imagined. You know, I can look back now in the pattern of my life and, and really believe God has a purpose for me, but he also has a purpose for you. And on the other side of that is the enemy where he knows he knows where to hit. He knows to hit below the belt. He's going to have that fear be if you fail. And what if you fail in front of all these people? What if you fail and don't find someone in that lunchroom? What if your business fails? Whether it's you're staying home with your children and you're raising beautiful babies or you're the CEO of a multi-million dollar company, let God speak into your life. Let his father heart come and say, this is what I have for you. And I think that's the key, not believing the lies, fixing our eyes on Jesus and walking in that truth. Wow, that, that must have been incredibly hard for her to mm -hmm. let go of a dream mm -hmm. uh, that you had. And you know, we all go through that where you know we, we have a dream on something, we work really hard, and we get to that point and, and we think everything's just going magnificent, everything's going great. And then all of a sudden, God says, lay it down, mm -hmm. give it up. And because I have, I have better things for you. And, and I could relate to that because for, for me, you know, when I was in was I was when I was in the army and I was doing what I was doing and I, I wanted to make it a career, it was so much a part and 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 I felt and I not I felt I knew God told me it's time, mm -hmm. it's the, you know the military has served its purpose it's time for you to move on, and you remember when I called you when I was overseas from a, a phone booth and I was crying because it was like the hardest decision at that point that I had to had made to walk away from something that I it was a dream of mine you know to be where I was and where I wanted to go and, and I couldn't do it by myself it's not like I could have just you know and so Sharon was there for me and sometimes we go through these things but God never asks you to lay something down yeah. that he's not going to make come up much more beautiful much more wonderful in the future yes exactly and what struck me about her was her beginnings how she could pinpoint where a lie was sewn into her mm. life. The lie was that she wasn't good enough. Right. And and that and then, and then we de that's what we deal with yeah, so much. That's what we deal with. We're not good enough, and the fear of failure. 
Yep. And so when you when you see, I thought those were just striking to me when you look at how successful they are, but yet how she started with that lie yep. and now setting the table for the, our final clip. Right. You'll see how opposites attract with Chip and Joanna. How she didn't she doesn't take risks. She doesn't um, you know she likes to play it safe. Right. And he's just wild. The total and opposite. Free roaming. <laughs> yeah. And so you'll see how God brought the two of them together to really complement one another. And so we might run a few minutes over, but please stick yeah, with stick us because I guarantee you're going to love this. Stick with okay? us. Okay, Sally. The shows I was always drawn to when I was younger were the ones where you'd have this really nerdy character um, that kind of hid in the background. And then you have this kind of jock Everyone loved, most popular guy in school, and he sees this person, this this girl who looks scared and who definitely isn't trying to get any attention on herself, and he, he sees the potential in her, and somehow he uncovers this whole new identity for this girl. Favorite thing about Chip? If you give Chip a boundary, he's gonna break that boundary. If you give him a rule, he's not gonna follow it. And if you tell him he can't go past this line, he'll put his toe over it. Joanna is like the purest, most stable person I've ever met. I like safety. I like knowing what's coming. I don't want to be surprised. I don't know if we would have dated in college if we would have known each other. My wife is a bit of a wallflower. You know, I joke with her pretty publicly that she was almost awkward when we first met. And he always jokes I'm the guy in the relationship. Because when he wants to talk and dig, I don't want to talk. I just want to eat my fries. I would have been the guy on a horseback riding off into the wilderness. I mean, that's who I sort of was by nature. And Joe could not be more opposite than that. Fear and failure doesn't even cross his mind. He doesn't let that even go through one ear and out the other. The little voice in your ear that talks when you're being quiet, my little voice tells me how handsome I am, tells me how funny I am, tells me how rich I'm gonna be. You know, it's just constantly talking can't censor chip. I used to drive my truck and I would play a little game with myself to see how out of gas I could get without in fact running completely out of gas. And she was like, why would anybody want to play that? For someone who is a rule follower to a T, um, it's, 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 it's an adventure. I think, like, loving somebody is top rolled down, James Dean and whomever, flying through the mountains, going too fast, reckless. And your idea was, no, bubble tape. Yeah, sitting around. Wrapped up. Eating, eating church's chicken. If I didn't have chip gains in my life, I'd still be dreaming in my head, but not acting out on any of that, not living it out. You pushed me. You push me out of my comfort zone. I like comfortable. I like predictable. Mm -hmm. And you push me. Am I any of those? No. Nope. Not comfortable or predictable? You're comfortable in that you're consistent in just who you are as Chip. But you're definitely not predictable. I think that's one of the reasons that I love her like I do. I mean, I feel like she knows me in a way that that is caused me to stop acting, you know? I feel like I've really been an actor. I've been a character my whole life. I've always tried to prove something to someone. Do the microphone thing, that okay. makes me feel more comfortable. Remember the time that I came home from that guy's trip in East Texas, do I look fat? Just, no, just, 
Make sure your jeans aren't too tight. You know what, what I mean? Do I feel, do I no, look comfortable? No, your jeans are real tight right there. <laughs> just like that. Why is the only Watch your I'm everything. I'm watching. <laughs> When I caught her, I finally felt content for the first time in my life. I felt like I could be exactly who I was. Look at you, sexy mama. Showing some skin. I see that. That's <laughs> interesting. I have learned so much about order and structure and, and processes through my wife. And God is all of those things to me now. But at the beginning, God was just chaotic to me. He was wild. He was untamed. He was un, unruly. And I, I liked that. But God had a funny way of bringing me Chip to almost have this reality of what it's like to follow Christ, which is a lot of the things are going to push you to a place of discomfort. A lot of things are going to push you to a place of freaking out. It takes someone who's externally this, whatever right, that processes, is, because yeah. um, it helps me get it out there, because it's healthier to be out there than it is just let it all kind of play in my mind. Hmm. I don't want to be in the box anymore. I don't want to play it safe, um, because where the impact is, is over here on the other side. You were like a flower in desperate need of water. You blossomed in a way that was really fascinating to watch. I was made for a reason, and I need to I need to let whatever God has created me for, I mean, that, that's, that needs to be known. I don't need to stay hidden. My walk with God when I was little and all the way up until like my 20s was always, if you play by the rules, you'll be blessed. Um, but then I met Chip and I feel like now it's when you take a step out in faith, when it makes absolutely no sense, um, I think that's where the greater reward is. There's no telling where that will take you. My name is Joanna Gaines, and I am second. And I'm Chip Gaines, and I am second. That was legit. I don't think so. I think, I think so. Let's try that again. Oh. They're awesome. They're incredible. Awesome. That was that was a great, great. Just you know, one of the things that. that stuck stuck out with me was how and I talk about opposites attract but I think that when you're in, like with us in 27 years of marriage when you're in a relationship that you can respect the other person's strengths and not be intimidated by that uh, and and not you know harp on their weaknesses or try to change them I think that what happens in a lot of people when they get married um, they, they want to kind of like change the other person right mm -hmm. so if you're an extrovert and you like to take risks then you're like you know you try to pull the person along if you're a person who's cautious and who doesn't like to take risks then what you'll want to do is try to you know calm the person down and i think and i've over the years sharon and i've talked to a lot of couples that were married couples that were going through difficulties and challenges and stuff like that and we've had the privilege to actually counsel couples that were getting planning to get married and, and one of the things that we learned is to respect one another where we're at. Eventually, when you're in a marriage and, you're, and you start to come together, some of her has rubbed off on me and some of me has rubbed off on her so that we can you know, move together as a team. Uh, you know, and coming from the military, the concept of a unit and moving together and being one was like ingrained in me. So it was always, you know, you're, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So there's areas that you know, I may not be comfortable, but she is, and we try to find a middle ground where we can both meet and put our faith together and trust God with that same amount of trust. So I come down and she comes up, or you know, I come up and she comes down, and we meet in a place where we can move together. 
But the worst thing you can try to do is just try to change your partner. I mean, like, if you're married and you knew they were like that before, it's kind of late now if you're married. Like, you, you know, it is what it is, and you're going to have to trust the Lord. But I think that's part of what you need to understand. Understand who that person is, who you are, and, and how do you move together. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So um, I can't even add to that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it any better. I'm just going to end maybe this show okay. with a quote from Joanna, which she said, which I thought it was great. Take a step out in faith when it makes absolutely no sense. That's where the greater reward is. There's no telling where that will take you. That's right. And I thought about that. You know, trusting God doesn't make sense. It's not, it's not logical it's to not. trust God. So I can't say it any better than what you said and what she said. And please join us in two weeks for part two yes. of the Chip and Joanna story. I think you'll really like it, uh, the people behind, behind the cameras here. And uh, with that, I guess we'll end with Ken's beautiful song. Yes. God bless you. God we'll bless see you. you in two we'll weeks. see you in two weeks. Pleasure, privilege. This is so fun. I'm Should I get the wrong thing? I'm thrilled to be yeah, here. Uh, so, uh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, Tom and I ran with it's each his other. song? Just the song. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Well, we're getting, how about, we'll go with this. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Faithful.